Hey, welcome to Mix Train. This is Better Mix, and today we're gonna talk about flipbooks and sequences. Alright, so we have the Roberto scene here from the uh, follow particles, from the particles the follow a curve tutorial. If you want to see how we did this, there's a tutorial in the uh, channel. Go watch it. So you can see this is just uh, Roberto made of particles and it follows a path. So let's do a flipbook of this. Uh, some of you might know this as a play blast. In Houdini, there are called flipbooks. And for this, we're going to use this little flipbook here. If we just click on it, it's going to bring this window for the uh, flipbook settings. So the frame range and uh, it's uh, with the frames do you want to uh, do you want a flipbook in in the default case the RF star and RFN uh, the, says that you're gonna do the uh, the range whatever range you have here is what it's gonna take here if you want a specific range you can type it here in my case I'm gonna leave it at that I have from uh, one put this at one. 1 to 120, I'm, I want that. Uh, I'm going to output it to the end play window. This is the image uh, player. If you can, oh, you can also save it to a file from here if you want to. All objects going to be included in the flipbook. If you just want uh, Roberto to be there, you can you can actually just drag that object there and, and do that. In the flipbook tab, you can actually put a file, uh, an audio file here or a background image, change the gamma, etc. You can make it look a little bit more beautiful here. You want more anti aliasing and stuff like that. I basically never touch this unless I'm doing something special, but most of the time it's just set this and then go to the size and set the size that I want. And it's going to tell you here the resolution is going to render out. I also always check the crop out window, uh, the view mask like this. It's going to just render this. If you don't do this, it's going to render the whole viewport here. And uh, depends on depending on the size you want, you need. You can also type a specific resolution here if you need it. Uh, in my case, I think that uh, that's a good size, so I'm gonna just click accept. And it's gonna start. Uh, brings the play window and creates a flipbook for us. So now we can just play and see it in real time. This is useful for you when you're doing uh, simulations and you want to see them in real time. When you're doing animation and you would just want to see it in real time, see it backwards and, and etc. So that's how you create flipbooks. So now that we have the end play window here, we can uh, see how we can use sequences. So let me just uh, keep this window up on top of my uh, main window. And I'm going to make a change here uh, in the node here. Let me go and change the noise maybe. The pop force, I'm gonna change the amplitude down. Let's see how it, it looks if I just put this amplitude uh, halfway down. Now for this, if I wanna compare that to the uh, the previous and this setting, I could do uh, a new flipbook or save this one to a file. You can go here, save it as a sequence, or you can export this as the uh, MPEG-4 uh, or MOV, etc. You can go to the render section and set a new sequence. And if you do that, uh, now it's going to create a new sequence when you uh, click this button. If you don't, it's just going to replace this one. But since we created a new sequence there and we changed this parameter, uh, now if we click this button, it's going to do that. It also brings the... the uh, now we're seeing the... Uh, the, the force there because we are inside the we are inside the pop net here, but uh, it's gonna be all right. So all right, that it's done, and you can see now I can see this one, and I can see how it is. Let me just redo it outside of here so we can compare it better. And I'm not gonna create a new sequence. I'm just gonna do it here so you can see it's replacing this one, and it just went really fast because it was already cached. So now I have this. This is the, the result, and I can see it's different, but how can I compare it to the previous one? If we go here to uh, Windows and uh, bring the sequence list here, now you can see we have two sequences here. 
The one active is the one with the little uh, green checkbox here. If you check this one, you can see now I'm seeing the previous one. You can see the, this one's different and I see this, I can compare it. And I can even overlay them. If we go to the uh, image, compare images. Now you can see I'm seeing both together there and I can see the differences a little bit. This is just mixing. Now you can see we are, uh, yeah, we're looking at the two here, just needed to display one. And, and this is, this is going to be the template of the other one. You can see this is one, this is the other one. I'm switching between the two there. And I, there's a few ways to see this, uh, here. Uh, I can actually just highlight the differences and you can see what is actually different from the uh, two or, uh, there's a few ways to, uh, check the uh, differences here compare you can see there's uh, a few of the differences there it's not really that useful for this but you can see what the difference is or just blend them together but uh you can see the difference is huge in, the, in this case so you can make different sequences and see what you like or you can send them to your supervisor or show them to your supervisor uh, in this way like do you like this amount of noise or do you like this amount of noise? And he's going to say, all right, well, I like the second one better or the, the, the third one or whatever other uh, sequences you have there. So it is pretty useful. I use this a lot when, especially when I'm doing simulation because I just tweak one parameter and want to see what is actually that being affected and how different it is from the previous one. So I use this a lot for that. And it's a really useful tool that I don't see being used a lot. So. I wanted to put this out for you guys to take advantage of that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys wanna support the channel, please go to uh, magicalfireeffects.mixtrn.com and buy our new training there. It's fully updated for Houdini 16. So thank you for watching and let's keep learning together. I will see you in the next one.